Well, winter really hasn't seemed to arrive yet here in Niagara Falls. We're into the first week of December, and it's like plus 10 out right now. It's still a little bit chilly, but not bad. But today, I'm gonna continue working on this ski -Doo GTX. Today, I'm gonna show you how to change a wheel bearing on the idler wheels on a snowmobile. It's a simple process, but it's one that you'll probably wanna know how to do. So why don't you sit back, and maybe grab something tepid today, cause I don't know what to get you, and enjoy Dino's Tinker Shed. I'll see you inside. These modern rear slide rail suspension systems are really something fantastic, but they all do include a few of these idler wheels. Now, suspensions on, on snowmobiles, rear suspensions anyway, have had bogey wheels and idler wheels for a long, long time. If you look back into the 70s and even into some of the sleds from the 80s, they only used bogey wheels that were actually part of the suspension. They were all on springs and they moved and they created a really smooth ride but they were prone to a lot of maintenance, the bearings were constantly wearing out, and the bearings and wheels themselves took all of the load and all of the weight from the suspension. The bonus to an all bogey wheel suspension, of course, is you don't need any snow, it doesn't need any lubrication, so you can pretty much drive an old land down the middle of the street in the summer, as long as you're willing to wear out your front wear bars. Now, Arctic Cat is really the ones that developed this slide rail style suspension and they did a great job and all of the other manufacturers eventually went to a slide rail suspension like this one on this 2005 GTX. But they still do use idler wheels inside of the suspension, at least most of the trail sleds do, to help with some of the hot spots, the place where there's a lot of wear, transitions in the track and of course on the back of the suspension where the track comes back up and around and, and does it circle they obviously need some wheels tires and bearings back there these are a serviceable item and they're also a wear item similar to brake pads eventually the bearings on these will wear out and you're going to have to change them or you're going to have to get someone else to do it these two here are uh, going to be serviced today. The first one, let's have a listen, maybe you can hear it. There's pretty much no grease left in that at all. The other one isn't too bad. So today what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to change a bearing out and then I'm going to also take the seal out of one of these bearings, clean the bearing and re-grease it and reuse it on one of the sides. So why don't we go ahead first and uh, we'll take this one off. To take these idler wheels off, these are really, really simple. There's two 13 millimeter nuts that we're just gonna spin off with our ratchet and then it comes out with a bracket assembly that we can then put up on the bench and take a closer look at. Why don't we get started right now loosening these off. I forgot that on the back of these idlers, you have to use a 13 millimeter wrench to hold the other side of this bolt here. So I'll just get working on that. So there's your nut, there's your bolt, and on this one, there's a washer as well. And then this should just slide right off and there's your wheel and your bearing. So why don't we get this up on the bench and we'll have a look at this. All right, here is our idler wheel. Now these come in all different sizes and bearing diameters depending on makes and models. This one just happens to be off of a 2005 Rev chassis with an SC3 rear suspension. 
Anytime I take a bolt out of a piece of equipment like this, I always take it over and clean it up on the wire wheel just to make sure that it's nice and clean. And then I'll usually put some thread locker on when I reinstall these. So I'll just set this over here for now. When you do inspect these particular plastic wheels, there's a few things that you are gonna wanna think about. The first is just to give it a general inspection. Make sure that none of the plastic is damaged and that the rubber tire is in decent shape. There's no missing chunks or cracks or delamination along the edges. This one looks like it's in really good shape. Of course, the reason we took this off was because this bearing is starting to make some noise. It hasn't failed and it'll probably last quite a while, but I would sooner change the bearing now when it's somewhat warm out before the season starts than in the middle of winter when everything's covered in ice and crap and I've got to melt it to get it off. The way these things are held in place is there's a snap ring that you can see right here. It's an internal snap ring. So it's expanding inside a groove on this part of the wheel or the tire here. No, this is the wheel, ah, yeah, whatever. We're gonna use a set of snap ring pliers to pull that out. And then we can just either press or tap this bearing out. And then we can take a look at it. So let's do that. Snap ring pliers have been around for a lot of years and I have an assortment of different snap ring pliers that I've used over the years for different projects. The first pair that I really had were these ones. Now, if you look, when you squeeze the handle here, it's gonna pull those pins in and allow us to take the snap ring out from inside that internal groove. Now, these ones have a special little function where you can move that lever and then you can actually move this over and now they become an external pair of snap rings for taking snap rings off of shafts. These have evolved eventually into these ones from channel lock and I like these ones a lot. You can see again, this is for external snap rings and then a simple flick of that switch and all of a sudden they become internal snap rings. I like these a lot for light duty applications and they come with a series of different tips that you can put in to change the profiles of these needles on the end, these pins. They're a good value too. Channel lock pliers, everybody goes on about snap on and all these other ones. Channel lock pliers are made in the USA. They're high quality products and they're reasonably priced and available and they come with a lifetime warranty. These are really a good tool. I do find, however, I tend to reach more often than not for these two. So these are dedicated um, external ring and internal ring snap ring pliers. They're very, very heavy duty for their size. And I, I find that the pins on them are really, really nice. So I grab these quite often. I also have this set up here, which is only for external snap rings, unfortunately. And it comes with a series of different tips that are super heavy duty. I've used these on trucks and different pieces of uh, industrial equipment over the years that I've helped people out with. I just happen to have these. You don't need a set that big. Either these channel locks or these dedicated ones will work fine for what you're doing. I am gonna clean as much of the grease off of here as I can. And this reveals our snap ring holes. So again, I'm gonna use our internal snap rings which compress the snap ring. And I'm just gonna put the pins into that snap ring and squeeze. You're gonna see, sometimes these are hard to get out so you kind of have to move them around a bit. Sometimes they get stuck. They're a little bit of a pain to deal with here, but we're gonna keep working at this and we're gonna get this sucker out of here. You can kind of see how it's stuck. There we go. See how it's moving? Now we just need to move it on this side and eventually it should compress enough that we can get it out. Now you're not gonna wanna damage this snap ring because they usually don't come. The bearings don't come with a new snap ring. See if I rotate it this way. Sometimes this helps. You can see it wants to come out. It's just not quite there. 
they get wedged in there and then they do not want to come out sometimes oh come on there we go oh, so close oh there we go i just about have it it's got to be patient there okay we got it and you can see it's a lot of force to hold those in we're going to clean all of this up either with some brake cleaner soap and water anything to get all the grease off of this and if it does have a little bit of rust we're going to clean that up as well with a little bit of sandpaper so now we have to get this bearing out of here and there are a few ways to do this so let me show you how you can change or how you can actually get that bearing out the first method that you can use is to use one of these which is a seal driver and i actually have the right size here so the way these work is this fits on there and you would put the screw or the bolt back in and these conical shaped pucks here are designed to actually fit in on the back side of something like this and then you use a couple pieces of wood you support the the uh the actual wheel and then you can come in here with something like a like a dead blow hammer and, and start tapping that out. And you can see it's already moving. Most people do not have a seal driver like this. So what you can use is just a large socket. This one happens to be, I think an inch and an eighth or something, an inch and a 16th. And it fits in very similar. And again, you can just come in and gently tap that out. If you have a press like I do, you can use these in the press and gently press these in and out. So maybe what I'll do is I'll tap it out with one of these and then I'll press it back in on my press when we get the other bearing out. So I'm just gonna finish tapping these out. So make sure that you tap it from the back side so there's a smaller hole here and then you just come through and tap it out. And that's it, your bearing is free. Here is our bearing, and I'm just gonna clean it a little bit with the rag here. When you're ordering new bearings, these are not all the same. There's different size outer and inner diameters that snowmobile manufacturers use for these idler wheels. Here is really the key to the whole process. This is the identification number. So this is a 6205 bearing. I'm gonna ignore these suffixes I guess it is so 6205 is the size of the bearing and I believe these are 25 millimeter and 52 millimeter I think but if you order a 6205 bearing it will fit and do the job you need now these suffixes here I believe refer to different types of grease that are in here whether they have a seal on both sides or just one side and the quality of the bearing itself. I think the one that I ordered was a 6205RS, I think, is what they usually put in these. If you go to some place like your local distributor, Royal Distributing, something like that, they will sell specific bearings, 6205 bearings, that are rated for snowmobiles. Yeah, so overall, it's not in terrible shape. But you can kind of hear, I'm just hold up the mic here. It's a little bit scratchy. I am going to try to pop off the seals here and repack this with grease. I'm going to clean it and then repack it. But I think first, let's get the new bearing into the wheel and the wheel back onto the sled first. Here is our new bearing. And again, it is, should say on here somewhere, oh, right there, 6205-2RS. This one is designed specifically for this, this wheel, or the wheel is designed specifically to accept that. This is just a generic bearing, but it's way, way, way smoother than this one. Now, before we put it in, I'm just going to compare it it appears to be the right unit. So what we need to do now is press this in. Now we could come back in here and use our seal driver again, like this, 
When you're pushing these bearings in, whether you tap them in or whether you use a press like I'm going to do, you want to do your best to push on this surface here, not this one and definitely not the seal. If you push on the inner race, you're actually going to be moving the two races like this with the ball in between and it can cause some serious damage. So try to find a socket that matches that outer diameter and I'm going to see if I have a seal driver that fits that perfectly. Ah, I found it. There's the right driver right there you can see. So I'm going to take this over. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean all of the surface up in here to make sure that the bearing seats properly down on this face. Then I'll take it over, I'll apply a thin layer of grease on there, and I'll push it down inside the actual well. Although not necessary to do this job at all, you can do this with a hammer quite easily tapping these in. A shop press like this is a really handy addition to even a small shop like mine. This small 12 ton shop press I think cost me around $130 on sale at Princess Auto. And I use it way more often than I thought. You can use it for things like bearings, pressing out the caps off of U-joints, and bending metal. You can even use it as a clamp sometimes when you want to press and glue things together. So they're not expensive, and if you have the option to actually buy one, they're very useful. What we're going to do here is take our bearing, and we're going to place it with the larger opening facing up and the smaller opening facing down. And I'm going to set that just here on the platen. We're next going to take our bearing and set it nice and square on top of the actual wheel itself and then using either your socket or in my case this seal press we're going to stack that on top like this and then we're going to slowly come down and press this in place making sure the bearing goes in square if you find that it's crooked a little bit you can either move it in the press or tap on the opposite side with your hammer i'm going to get going ahead here and pressing this down and in You're going to want to slowly press this in until you feel it bottom out on that plastic shell. Now be careful if you're using one of these presses, it puts 12 tons of force down. So you don't want to damage that reference face on the other side of the tire. So just gently take your time and press it in until you feel it tighten up. The last thing I'm going to do is make sure the bearing is set down in deep enough that the snap ring groove is visible. If it's not, you'll never be able to get the snap ring in and you're going to need to push the bearing down in a little bit further. You can see the new bearing fits in there really well. And the only thing we have left now is to put this snap ring back down in there. So once again, I'm just going to lay the snap ring on. I'm going to line up my pliers and then I'm going to, with my thumb, push down and make sure that it locks in the groove. And that looks pretty good. Reinstalling really is just the opposite of taking it off. I'm going to install this particular wheel with the larger hole facing the outside of the rail. I'll just slide that on and then I'll insert the bolt coming from the inside and it has a fairly large washer that sits on the race of the wheel itself. So let me just get that done now. It just goes in and then this goes in through the hole which can be a little bit tricky. I'll put the torque settings for this in the video, I'll just overlay it.
One of the things that I noticed when Mark bought this sled is it was missing a couple of these bearing protectors that fit on the idler wheel. Now, these are easily available. They're a couple bucks a piece. And what they do is help to keep dirt, water, snow, all of those types of things out of the bearings and in the normal environment where they're supposed to be. These are easy to install and really if you're missing some of these it's worth the effort to buy them and get them installed. I'm going to pop this one on right now onto that wheel. I'm going to be doing this backwards here but basically what you do is you sort of rotate these things in and um, move your way around like trying to put a tire on a bicycle I guess. They pop in fairly easy and you can see they protect that wheel from contaminants that might find their way in over time. I'm going to try to pull out this bearing seal here. You'll see that you can kind of get in behind there with a pick and gently pry this thing out. Look at how gross it is in there. I don't know if you can see that, but everything's all dried up. I'm going to pull it off of this side as well, and I'm going to see if we can sort of refurbish these bearings. Now you'll notice I'm not going to pull up on the seal, it'll bend it. I'm going to use this little pick here to run around and pop it out. See, it's not bad. It's just dirty. I'm going to drop this thing in my ultrasonic cleaner and try to clean all these parts, and then we'll reassemble it and uh, see how well it, how good it feels when we get that done. The seals here came out of the ultrasonic cleaner really nice. And this is pretty good too. What I did is I did come in here with a little bit of compressed air. There was a few chunks of hardened grease that were still in here. And then I hit it with some brake cleaner, my favorite product, brake cleaner. Blew it out again. And then I just put the outside surface across my wire wheel just to clean it up. Now it's not perfect, but you can hear that even though it's making noise because there's no grease in it, it does sound fairly smooth. I don't know if you can hear that or not. I'm not sure if I'm going to want to put this back into service as a primary bearing. A bearing like this is only like $5 to buy. But I think I'm going to repack it and then give it back to Mark in this little box. And he'll have a spare just in case something happens out on the trail. It's always good to carry spares. I know I've showed how to pack a bearing before when I did... Uh, a trailer bearing service video with my brother-in-law. I'm going to show you again here just in case you didn't see that video. The idea of packing a bearing is not just to apply grease to the outside, but you want to actually drive grease through the bearings so that it packs inside of it. The way to do that is you're going to grab some um, wheel bearing grease like this and you're going to take just a dollop of it, about like that. And I'm going to put that into the palm of my hand that you can see here. I'm going to take the bearing, and you're going to see there is a retainer on this side. I'm going to take the open side here, and with a scooping motion, I'm going to push the bearing down against the surface of my left hand here, which will push the grease up. And you basically just scoop and push that grease in until it goes right down into the bearing like that. You're going to walk your way around the bearing, continuing this scooping and pushing motion, pushing the grease through. And eventually, like you see here, it comes through like a snow cone kind of thing. So I'm just going to keep going here until uh, I get this sucker packed up. Now I'm going to be putting way more grease into this than any snowmobile bearing ever has. But it should work quite well um, 
as a spare bearing. And you can see now it's come through the outside, so I'm just going to swivel that a little bit to move it around inside. And this is where it gets a little bit gooey. And I think that's pretty good. I'm just going to wipe this excess off. I'm going to push it down, in this case, with my finger down into the bearings. And I'm just going to take the excess off the outside so that it's easier to handle to get the actual um, seals back in. So, let me just get these gloves off and we'll go on to the next check, the next uh, step. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take our seal and gently go around and push that back down in. It doesn't take much. Flip it over and go to the other side here. There we go. Now, now I'm going to clean up all the excess grease on this thing and see how we did. That feels just like a new bearing. And bearings shouldn't spin freely. They should move freely, but shouldn't spin freely if they're packed with grease like that. I think this will make a good spare for my friend Mark. And I'll just wrap it up and put it back into the box. And that wraps up today's episode on how to change a bearing in a snowmobile idler wheel. You know, having this older 2005 sled in my shop really has ignited a passion again about working on these old machines. When I used to run older machines, I was out here all the time tinkering on them and tuning them and polishing them. When I bought my newer snowmobile, I just never do that anymore. It's really just polishing, changing the oil, and uh, riding it, which is fun, but getting to work on one of these older machines really is enjoyable. And it's part of the hobby, especially when you first start to learn and maybe you can't afford a newer machine. Working on these snowmobiles can be a lot of fun. If you liked today's episode, please leave a comment down below. Let me know if I'm missing anything here because sometimes I do. And if you really did like the content today, by all means, feel free to like and even subscribe if you feel the channel's worth it. It really does help me to understand exactly what kind of content people like or maybe don't like. And it helps YouTube's algorithm to figure out whether or not to recommend me to other people. So feel free to hit the like button and subscribe if you want. Until next time, I've got a few more things I need to do on Mark Snowmobile here before the snow hits. He's only a few days away before he's coming down to get it. But I hope to see you soon here on Dino's Tinker Shed. You have yourself a great day. Bye for now.